Hard to capture, extravagant, resurrect the track and it's militant. And I react like a convict and start killing. It's manifesting. The gods work like appliances, dealing in my sight like a lot. Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Noel to explain here, bringing you guys another discussion for the Boruto manga. So obviously if you're an anime only fan, if you're not caught up on the manga, then I highly recommend catching up on the manga. And one of the things I'll do is I'll leave links down in the description box for you guys to uh, get caught up on the Boruto manga and do so in a way that helps support the channel. But with all that being said, if you're still here, I'm going to assume you're okay with me talking about spoilers. So I wanted to talk to you guys about Ishiki Yotosuke. Now I know somebody's like, damn, you know, you, you've talked a lot about Ishiki, what more could you possibly have to say? <laughs> well, the thing is, is that I've been really just thinking about Amado's plan. I've been really just sitting down thinking about it, and I've been going, like, Amado's giving all this information to Naruto and Sasuke, and he's explaining all these different things. He's put Kashi and Koji, better known as the Jiraiya clone, in a situation where it's a no-win situation. Like, Amado even says himself, he says, if killing Ishiki would have been this easy, I wouldn't have had to go through all these links. Nobody expected it to be this easy. And that's brought me to the thing. I really feel like in the the last chapter Kodachi wrote it into the story to where Ishiki's major weakness is in front of us it's it's not the fact that his karma seal he doesn't have karma on anybody that is a huge weakness that is don't be wrong that is a huge weakness but that's not the weakness that is going to allow him to be defeated no I think the major weakness is the fact that he was basically forced to reincarnate himself inside of Jigen even though Jigen's body was not perfect I think that because he used a host that could not fully contain his power that Ishiki is going to be in a situation where yes he has this new dojutsu he has his original body but I don't think he's going to be able to pull out the full power of that body and if that's the case if that's the case that he can't pull out the full power of his body or like what Amado was saying that like you know we got less than 48 hours I'm wondering if that 48 hours is what Amado was saying like as far as with Jigen saying your body's going to need three days to recover or if that 48 hour time period is more so something there's 48 hours before Ishiki there's another step that goes forward because the fact of the matter is, is that Amino gave Naruto a hell of a time clock saying we need to get to the bottom of this now I need your answers now and so I think that if this is the case I think that number one it sets up a few long game angles so the the obvious long game is that Ishiki at some point is going to give Kwaki his karma seal we all know that's going to happen because we saw the flash forward sequence and that's one of the benefits of writing with in medias ray where you write the story and you tell the story from the middle and just go forward but in a case like this this is actually the reverse of it where you write the flash forward sequence and then you take the story all the way into the back and you're basically telling the story to get up to the point of the flash forward and then once you get to the flash forward you tell the story in the order as it goes after that and so when you look at that we know that eventually Kawaki is going to get his karma seal we just don't know when and I think that if you say in the long game that each he's going to use Kwaki because Kwaki's not that perfect body. Sure, I think we all can agree with that. But in the short term, because he's using Jigen's body, I think that now you're going to see a situation where Naruto and Sasuke, not only do they have prep time, not only do they have information about Ishiki, but they also have prior knowledge as far as how Ishiki fights. They've had an opportunity to swap hands with them. And don't get me wrong, Ishiki has been extremely more powerful, but the second time when Naruto and Sasuke fight him, if he does come to Konoha, the situation is going to be different. It's going to be a lot more similar to what you saw with the Kaguya fight. And I'll explain to you guys what I mean on this, okay? So essentially with that Kaguya fight, when Kaguya was fighting against Naruto and Sasuke, I think a lot of people downplay the fact that Kaguya was significantly more powerful than Naruto and Sasuke. For all those power-ups that they got from Hagoromo, they couldn't actually defeat her. They were able to seal her, but that was after Kaguya dragged the fight out, and Kaguya exhausted a lot of her own chakra. Because when you go back and you look at that fight on more than one occasion, it becomes clear that Kage is significantly more powerful than Naruto and Sasuke, and Kaguya was attacking them with the intention of stealing their chakra. So it's kind of like with the Akatsuki when the Akatsuki were hunting down the Biju. Some of those members could outright kill the Jinchuriki, but they couldn't because they needed the Biju chakra inside of them. There were times when Kage was fighting against Naruto and Sasuke that Black Zetsu was saying, Mother, I need you to take this seriously. You can't allow them to do this. You can't allow them to do that. And at the time, a lot of us were saying, especially when the chapters are coming out, that it gets really 
annoying to have Black Zetsu narrate so much for Kaguya. Why isn't Kaguya speaking for herself? But you know, when you start looking at it, there are some similarities. When Ishiki does come for Kawaki, on one hand, sure, he could fight Naruto and Sasuke and he would be able to kill them, okay? He'd be able to kill them because he doesn't specifically need them, but he also, we know that he needs Kawaki so he can give him the Karma Seal and he also needs Boruto. And it's for that reason that I could see a scenario where because Naruto and Sasuke have the prep time because they have the information, it puts them back in this situation with Kaguya where on one hand, Ishiki isn't fighting with the intention of not being able to kill them, but he's still at a handicap because now they have prior information. One of the themes that Naruto's done repeatedly over and over again is that it showed us that the more you show your special ability to an enemy the next time that they actually fight you they're able to counter you and Naruto and Sasuke at the end of the day they're still shinobi okay so that logic that Zabuza gave to Kakashi way back in the land of waves arc it still applies at this point now that brings me to the next thing though that brings me to the next thing so when you also look at that there's also the scenario that you have to at least consider that when Ishiki does come if he comes to Konoha he can't just blow everything up because he can't risk harming Boruto and he can't he definitely can't risk harming Kawaki because Kawaki's body no longer has karma so if Ishiki just blows up the whole village Kawaki can't absorb it Kawaki can't use karma in no type of way to actually save himself so to a certain extent he's going to be handicapped between the prior intel that Naruto and Sasuke had on, on how to kill Inosu Suzuki and now because of the circumstances I could see a scenario where Ishiki because he's fighting using a body that was originally Jigen's body for him to reincarnate because he's not able to pull out his full power I could see a scenario where he's going to be forced to retreat if not uh, outright killed but in order for that to happen that would have to be something to where basically Kawaki gets the karma seal placed on him in some kind of way before he's actually killed but I, I definitely think that they are setting up a backdoor way to actually bring down Ishiki because he clearly did not want to get reincarnated inside of a body that was originally Jigen's body however I want to know from you guys how do you guys feel about that what do you guys think about this theory let me know down in the comment section below but as always guys if you like anything I had to say. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.